Hey YouTube, this is Mazna with another video tutorial in my new series that I have given the name iOS SDK Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up push notifications for your app. So, there's a lot of steps that have to be carried out, but it's the same for every app. So, if, if if when I'm doing these steps, some of them don't make much sense to you or you can't figure out the reason behind it, don't worry about it because you really don't have to understand the steps. Uh, it's the same no matter what you're doing with your push notifications. So the basic idea is you create an app ID in the iOS portal or the developer portal, whatever it's called. Then you create... A certificate from keychain access you upload the certificate to Apple servers they sign it you download it you install it on your Mac and then you have to create two certificate files p12 files one that's a certificate one that's a key and then you use some terminal commands to concatenate the two into one certificate PM file that you upload to your server and then you use that when you make a secure connection to Apple servers and then you can push whatever information you want. So you can push any message you want with the, any sound you like to whatever device you want to send it to and you indicate the, the, the exact iOS device that you want to push notification to by providing a device token. Every device has a unique token that you can grab when the app launches and you can save it to your service somehow. So I'm not going to show you that step because that's kind of a tutorial in and of itself. But I will show you how to grab a user's device token. And then I'll show you how to create the PM file, this, the SSL certificate. And then I'm even, even going to provide a script, a PHP script, for sending notifications. I'll make this all available for download. All right, so let's begin by creating an application. So I'm going to go with single view application. We're not going to do anything in the app other than a couple lines of code for retrieving, for asking for, and then retrieving the device token for this particular iOS device. So product name, push app. And then you're going to need this identifier, so don't forget this. And we'll make it on the desktop. Okay, so now we need to go into the developer portal. Obviously, you're going to need an account, so log in. Go to the provisioning portal. On the left menu, select app IDs. You need to make a new app ID that corresponds with the app ID I just created in Xcode. So I'm going to call this push app. And if you remember, the identifier was com.anthonyfrizzalone.push app. Okay. So now let's find that one. Okay, so here it is. So you can see it's configurable for a lot of things. Passes, data protection, iCloud, etc., etc. On the bottom is push notifications. So we have to click configure on the right here. And we're going to check off enable for push Apple push notification service. And so there's two options here. One for development, so that's testing, and the other for production. This is the certificate you'll upload and use when the app's in the App Store. But we're going to go with development here obviously because we're just testing our app. So to click configure and now we need to create and upload a certificate from that we generate from keychain access. So I'm going to type command space, bring up keychain access. And at the top here we go to keychain access, certificate assistant, request a certificate from a certificate authority. Uh, save to disk. I'm going to leave that email address is fine. Common name Anthony Frizzone, that's fine. Continue. We'll save it to the desktop as push cert. And we're done here. So now we're going to go back to the browser. We're going to click continue. We're going to upload the certificate that we just generated. 
push cert dot cert signing request. Click generate. Okay, it's been uploaded, signed. Now click continue. And we're going to download the certificate. Once downloaded, we're going to install it. And here is that certificate that we just created. So now we can close the browser for now. And we need to export both of these files as .p12 files, which stands for Personal Information Exchange. So I'm going to right click on the first item, export. I'm going to save it to the desktop as cert. Now it wants an import password. We don't, it's not necessary, so I'm going to leave it blank. But now I have to type in my password. Okay. Now that's on the desktop. Now we need to do the same thing for the private key. I'm going to name it key.p12. Alright, so I'm going to close keychain access. Let's take a look at the desktop here. Okay, so we've got our 2.p12 file. So now... I have some terminal commands already typed out that are going to concatenate these into one .pem file. So I'm, I have them saved in text edit. I'm going to open up terminal. Okay. So first I'm going to change the directory to the desktop. And now I'm going to copy this first command. And this first command takes the cert.p12 file on the desktop and generates a cert.pem file. So we're converting to pem because pem files are SSL files that servers more regularly work with. Remember we didn't put an import password. Okay cool, so now we've generated the cert.pem file. Now I do the same thing for the key.p12 file. There was no import password, but it wants a passphrase the uh, PEM passphrase for the key.pem file. So we'll type in Anthony. Confirm. Okay. Now this third line, this removes that password that we just put on the key file. So it'll remove the Anthony password. I'm not going to because when you're doing something like this, you want it to be as secure as possible. The last thing you want is you know, somebody to steal your SSL file, upload it to their server, and now they can send notifications to people that have downloaded your app, and that could jeopardize the integrity of your entire application. So if you, if you, if you want to remove the password, you can, but I recommend leaving it on. And then the final line here, that's going to concatenate the two PEM files into one file called ck.pem. But I have to remove key.unencrypted because that's what this third line would have generated but we didn't use that and there's our ck.pm file All right, so now I can quit terminal hide this we have to go back into our browser now and generate a provisioning profile now that we have uploaded a certificate a push notification certificate. So I'm going to sign back in, go back to the iOS provisioning portal, and I'm going to click on provisioning. And now I'm going to make a new profile for the push app app ID. And I'm going to select all because I believe this one is my iPhone, but just to make sure I'm going to enable this profile for all the devices I have on my portal. I'm going to call the profile name Push App Profile, and I'm going to sign it with my regular certificate. All right? Let's find it here. Push App Profile. It's pending. Let's refresh, and it's ready for download. So I'm going to download that. I'm going to drag it into Xcode. So now in our app, let's go to Build Settings. And here's the code signing. So 
I'm going to sign it with that profile that I just generated, push that profile. All right. And now we have to add a few lines of code to our app delegate.m file. So first, when the application finishes launching, we need to ask Apple for a device token for this device so we can send notifications to it from our PHP file, which will be on our server that I'm going to go to in a little while. So real simple, UI application, shared application, register for remote notification types, and there's three types we want here. UI remote notification type alert, then UI remote notification type badge, so we can add badge numbers to our applications icon on the home screen, and the last is UI remote notification type sound. And that's done. And now we have to implement a delegate method application did register for remote notifications with device token and then it's going to pass in the device token uh, as an NS data instance and we can turn that into an NS string object like so So this will fill in, th this percent at sign will be replaced with the, the device token's description, and the description contains the device token. And now let's log that. And let's run, our, run the app on my iPhone. So now you cannot test push notifications with the simulator because the simulator will return nil for the device token since it doesn't have a device token because it's not a real device. So I'm going to run this on my iPhone and I'm going to use reflection to show you what's going on on my iPhone. Okay, so the app's been launched and of course as in any other app that wants to use push notifications, it first asks me if I want to allow push notifications in this app. So I'm going to click OK. And here, logged in the console, is the device token. So I'm going to copy that. Now we have the device token to send notifications to. So we're done here. So now this app's not going to do anything. It's just a dummy app to show you how notifications work. So I'm going to stop that, the app. I'm going to go back to Reflection. And now I'm going to go back to my home screen. Okay. So now I'm actually going to hide Xcode. And now here we get to the server side portion. So I have in Coda here, I have a file that I already typed out, which serves the purpose of sending notifications to a device. So I'm going to delete this here. This is the device token that notifications are going to be sent to. And I'm going to paste my device token. Okay. So now I'm going to quickly go through this file, and again, I'm going to provide this for download so you don't have to worry about typing it yourself or, or making your own because it's a semi-complex script. So down at the bottom, I have a form, and in the form, you can type the message you want to send to the device. Once the user has submitted the form, or if post messages, if post message exists, First, we set the device token in this variable here. We're going to save the device token in the device token variable. Then we're going to take out any slashes, strip slashes on the message that was posted. And now here is a payload. This is what it looks like. This is the form you need to follow when you send a notification to a device. It's JSON format. And generally, you can just leave it like this. So in here, inside the apps, you have three, three other keys, alert, badge, and sound. So in alert, you're going to provide the message that you want to send to the device. Next, badge, the badge number you want to appear on the device. So I'm just going to leave one. And then finally, the sound. 
This sound already exists in iOS, and there's others that you can also use, but you can also use your own custom sounds. So if you want to use your own custom sounds, you just provide the custom sound in the app's main bundle when you build it, and then you just type out the file name here, and that sound will be played when the re user receives the notification, even if they're not in the app. Now here, we create a stream to Apple servers. This first line here, set option, that sets the PM file. So let's upload that now. So I'm going to drag it from the desktop and put it into this directory. And so now this that SSL certificate, ck.pm, will be attached to the stream. The next line here, this sets that passphrase. So the passphrase we set was Anthony. If you use that third terminal command to remove the passphrase, you can just comment this line out. Next, we create a stream to Apple servers, gateway.sandbox.push.apple.com for the port 2190. Now, we're using the sandbox environment, so we use gateway.sandbox.push. If you are doing this for an application that exists in the App Store, you remove sandbox, so it's just gateway.push.apple.com, also on port 2195. So if the stream successfully connected to Apple servers, we print notification sent, otherwise failed to connect with the error. Now here, I create an array of the device tokens we want to send the notification to. Now, since we only have one device, this array will only have just one device token, and this for each loop will run one time. And then here is where we actually write to the server and send the message. So this all here generates the exact format that a notification being sent has to follow. So you can just leave this all the same. Don't worry about modifying this. The only thing you really need to worry about modifying are these three items here. And if you want to get more into the depths of how to design a payload for your notification, you can read Apple's documentation that goes more in depth with it. But for the simple purposes of this, this video, we're just going to stick to this simple payload and use this format. So it attaches the device token, removes any spaces, attaches the payload, and then it sends the message with F right, and then the connection is closed. Okay, so let's save this file. And now let's open this file in our browser. And let's try setting a notification. It says it was sent. Now let's check in reflection. And perfect, exactly as we had hoped, the notification pops up on the top of the screen. Let's send something else. And again, there it is. So like any other notification, we can tap on it. It'll open the app. Or... We can slide down, bring up Notification Center, and there are the three notifications in Notification Center. We can tap in any one of these, and it brings up the app. So as you can see, it's actually really not that complicated. The steps that we follow are the same for every app. And so now your, your job as a developer is to figure out how you want to implement this and make use of this in your app. So in, in, in our implementation, or our pseudo implementation, we simply copied the device token from the console and pasted it, we hard coded it in our script. But if you wanted to do this dynamically, you would, when, the, when you receive the device token and the application did register for remote notifications, method is called, you would want to take this device token and upload it to your server whether and save it in a TXE file or a MySQL database and then dynamically send notifications to the right user when you want to alert them about something that's going on with their version of the app, with your app. And so that concludes this video. Uh, I hope you learned a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.